what's going on? Welcome to Talking Shop with myself, Clipper Kemp. Talking to people about what they do and why they do it, hoping to guide you through your future. I've been a barber for over 20 years now, meeting some really interesting people along the way. In this series, I want to talk to some of them about what they do and why they do it, hopefully guiding you through some really difficult choices. In today's episode of Talking Shop, we're going to be talking to a good friend and of course long-term client, Joel. He is a personal trainer, a two-times physique champion, bodybuilder. Let's see why he does what he does, see if he gets his cock out, let's go. Yes, Joel. What's happening? How's it going, brother? Good, 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 good. Busy day? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm yeah. fairly busy. Did legs this morning as well, so nice. I kind of Batted. drained. Batted. So, man, what did you want to do when you were a kid? Obviously, we know you're a PT, a bodybuilding champion, and everything. We'll get into that a bit later. So, to be honest with you, as a kid, I really wanted to work in film. Mm -hmm. So, my first ever job it was in post production as a runner. And I quickly learned that I can't actually work for anyone and I have to be self-employed basically. I don't do well taking orders and things like that. And so how did you end up doing what you're doing now? So basically my mate Jack, he sort of was like, look, I'm gonna do this PT course. And I was a bit lost at the time. I just got into the gym around the time that he did. And he was like, you might as well come and do this with me. So I worked in a kitchen as a kitchen porter, saved up the money for a PT course. And then me and him did a 12 week intensive for the, a personal training in YMCA awards. What qualification? do you need to like get into what you're doing? The only so. one you actually need is level three personal training qualification. And can you do the level three straight away? Or yeah, you yeah, you can. Else? When I first started, I didn't really go straight into PT. I started as a gym instructor. So for gym instructing, you only need level two. Tell us the difference. A gym instructor, you're working for the gym, you're doing classes and you're cleaning the gym. They have a system now where you do like a few shifts of gym instructing and then you do like some hours of PT. But back in the day, they were two different things. You couldn't do both of them at the same time unless you did it at a different Gym. So yeah. this is what I did. I did gym instructing at Chris Old Leisure Centre and then I used to personal train at Muscle Works too. My gym. Yes, your gym. Well, you're on the wall in there, bro. I'm not in the wall in there. I am on the wall in there. <laughs> so, yeah, the so PT, the, the bodybuilding stuff that really sort of what, sparked a passion in you. And... When I finally decided to go self employed, I went to a gym called Jubilee Hall and that's where I realised that as much as you can just be a PT, you've got to do something that really sets you apart. I feel like sometimes the hours can always be quite unsociable with PT because you're in there first thing in the morning and most nights you're leaving at 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. Where I am now, I've chose somewhere that was close to my home, so I'm able to go home during the day, so it's a little bit better. I get to go home, play a bit of Call of Duty, blow off some steam, and then go back to work, so I guess that's a bonus. I'll be, I'll be honest with you, man, it's unbelievable some of the situations I've had with clients where, like, I've had a client buy 10 sessions, literally do one session, just sacked it off because they they realised that actually that one session was so hard they just don't want to come back. And it's not ideal. But what you want to do is get them coming in on a regular basis because not only is it good for them and you can make change in their life, but also you know, it's a regular paycheck for you because they they find it like beneficial. One of the things I would say as well is sometimes, you know, you get people that they get sick during a session. It doesn't happen that often, but when it does happen, I just think in my head like, wow, you must really need this. Because believe me, and when I tell you, if I know that someone's new to the gym, their session's not going to be that hard. You are 10 paces behind where the average person should be. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's scary because people value things like going to the pub more than they do going to the gym. It's quite a, a worrying situation that the world's in, you know, where people value their booze money over, you know, actually getting a fitness routine and getting themselves in shape that, true, that can enable them to live longer, really. Some people, the gym is all they have and fair enough, but you know, I just think there is more to life. There is definitely a lot more to my life than the gym. Put it that way. Yeah. What makes you stand out from other people? And that's when I decided to get into competitive bodybuilding and do something that some people haven't done yet, or they have done it, but they haven't won anything. And you know, I ended up doing pretty well with that. Won a few regional championships, come top six in the UK twice. I was always chasing that first place. I reckon I could have got it in the British final, but yeah. it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work. So we've spoken about, at lengths before about training and all the rest of it. What comes with it and stuff. But like, at a competitive level, it is just that little bit more do you know what it was as well, right? I'll be completely honest with you. Life in London has changed a lot since 2015, 16, 17 time, which is when I was competing. When you compete, it's so expensive, like the food and yeah, things green. like that. Your business kind of suffers. You end up having to cut back on the hours a tiny bit because obviously towards the end of it, you're just completely fried. I would love to do it again, but then I also think in my head, it's like, could I even do that now, man? I've got so many outgoings and rent is so expensive now. It's like, can I afford to jeopardize business? And Because you don't actually get paid to do a show. You get paid if you kind of get sponsored and things like that. And you know, it takes a lot of winning to even get that. Cool, man. Thank you.
people talking to me about so, right, what you're doing. Keep training, man. You're looking good. Thank you, brother. I will. I will. <laughs>